I'm not saying it's not possible. You know what I mean? Like I'll do a follow up on a Monday or a Friday, but if I'm doing like that code outreach mm-hmm. Tuesday through Thursday between eight to 10 and four to six or like the sweet spots I found out of work. <laughs> Good man. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for all the love on uh, on YouTube, bro. I was like, I was talking to my sister, like, man, this guy's over here showing love on like all the videos. I was like, I gotta, I gotta chat with him. So, yeah, yeah, man. No, I'm, I, you know, well, first of all, man, just thank you for the time that you know you you're setting aside even to have this conversation. I just was in, you know, trying to search out. It's hard. Well, I related to you first of all because you're a videographer. And, um, and you do, you kind of at one point did weddings and, you know, everybody, you know, talks about entrepreneurship or solopreneurship, but it's hard for me to relate when you're not in my world, you know? So there was that piece of relativity and I was like, oh, wait a minute, this dude has done it. Wait a minute. Let me try to see if I can follow this path, you know? So that was kind of the thing. And then once I kind of ran, I was just searching the internet, just trying to figure out, um, video production how to just get into commercial world i've kind of you know done pretty well with the weddings um but you know i want to get into commercials and i was like i just couldn't find a way to find a client i had no way of figuring that out so i just got got the um i don't unfortunately i don't know anybody to really reference or just ask and like plug me in that way and some of the things that i were doing i just didn't know if it was right or wrong you know it's like man Mm -hmm. just the way is and just trying to find like where that client hangs out at how to reach that doctor. And I've been kind of like hitting barriers at first, you know, cause you know, you go to YouTube university and everybody has a method of doing it, you know, but then it becomes too much information at that point. So then that's when I scaled back when I ran across your channel, I was like, oh, okay then. And then I seen one, I'm like, okay, then this makes some sense. Okay, this is applicable. And a lot of stuff that, so I tried to do the hard work first, like start right. taking some actionable steps because when I was watching what you were doing, that's why I kind of held off trying to connect because I was like, I don't want to connect. And I didn't even do what your, your channel is already, you know, like suggesting you should do. So I, um, when I uh, initially um, saw, okay, then LinkedIn is a way, I didn't even knew anything about LinkedIn. So I was like, oh, okay, then let me figure out, let me at least get that established. Now I just went, I like paid somebody I knew. I was trying not to like ask redundant questions because mm-hmm. then you would just you would just be given like the same solutions you gave before. So when I I did went and get the professional headshots, kind of got like the LinkedIn profile set up, not really clear. That's kind of one of my questions today. Like, and I guess it's more like more on me, but who to figure out who am I reaching out on there because I'm not really understanding like titles and, mm-hmm. and how that title is associated with that position within the company or the business. And then is that the person I'm really looking for in terms of a niche? So like my current situation, let me just give you my current situation. That way you kind of have, I work at nine to five, uh, work for the government, been there for 15 years. And I got into weddings because weddings is like a weekend thing. And, you know, being married, uh, got the, like 20 years, got five children, got married right out of high school. You know, it's not ideal. There's a, like a lot of I need a clear strategy if this is Mm -hmm. what I want to do because of the responsibility that's tied, you know, to myself. So for weddings, the filming game, you know, that's just what I like. I'm good at it. Um, Did weddings. And then I was like, man, I had a a client that I, because of COVID, um, they needed like uh, some like videos and stuff done, like a talk show thing or what may have you. Like that was a big contract. So I think I ended up making it almost like, close to like $14,000, nice. like with that one client. And the thing was that I couldn't replicate that. And that was like just straight because of COVID. Mm-hmm. That's how that happened. There's what was it? Uh, the you client, like, or, the client, not the client detail, but like, what was the project? Oh, the, the project was just like filming like a 45 minute, like talk show. Mm-hmm. And they were trying to um, push that out to like their church. It was like church base. So church is good. Yeah, they were trying to push that out to them. And then like, so I was like, hey, you guys should just go for YouTube, you know, what may have you, and then you guys can monetize it. And you can get some of that back. So then, you know, they went the YouTube route and then that's pretty much, it ran from like that February to like maybe like the end of March of last year. And so that kind of was that. Then I jumped into the wedding game because I had those weddings that was already booked. Mm-hmm. 
So then when when it came around this time, you know, wedding season kind of died down. And I'm thinking like, man, that was smooth to like come in, know I was gonna and it was kind of like a retainer base. Yeah. Basically. So it wasn't like a half day, full day rape. But it was really hard to replicate that. I feel like COVID, I I just like caught because mm-hmm. it was COVID. But then I mean, I'm trying to go ahead. Yeah, but just trying to replicate that was like I just was not able to do it <laughs> so you reached out to other churches trying to offer the same thing or yeah so like i just like yeah, so yep so since i was good at it that particular area and i kind of knew the lingo and i kind of already had this working relationship i just did something for another church that's like in the suburbs here in wisconsin and like they didn't really have the budget and that's really kind of basically this church just had the budget to do mm-hmm. it like that and, you know, this other place, I just did like a one-off project. So I just kind of like charged them like a half day rate, like 800 bucks, mm-hmm. which included the editing. And that was kind of that. Um, couldn't really like, there just was no budget to work with anything else. Neither were they really interested in nothing else. Even after looking at their website, like, hey, you, you get some website, you know, mm-hmm. information right here. You know what, they just wasn't interested. And I find in that no matter what direction I'm going in now, and I'm like, I don't know, like, is it, Am I doing it right? You know, like, I don't know. Like, you know, and I just went with that because it, that clientele, that niche, because it just landed that way. Mm-hmm. But um, I don't know. So then I, <laughs> that was kind of where I'm at. So I kind of was getting most of my clients to like Facebook groups like that. And that's how I ended up with the, the church one. Yeah. But when I'm finding that many clients, when I find them through Facebook, um, they're just not high paying clients. It's they're really cheap. Like a really, yeah, it's like a one-off 13. job, you know. Yeah. Hey, can you edit these six videos for like, you know, thirty dollars or some weird like that, you know? Can mm-hmm. you film for a hundred bucks, you know? And I, so I know like that's not where I'm gonna find the client, and so that's where I become lost at trying to, uh, outside of having any <clears throat> organic relationships. So first of all, you're gonna have a a tough time. I mean, I don't know what your day to day looks like working for the government or like what your nine to five is there. Because most of the like one-on-one combating that I do with like clients, your two sweet spots to outreach for clients are between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. And between 4 to 6 p.m. Usually Tuesday through Thursday, I find it'd be better. Usually I don't like Mondays because Mondays after the week, everybody is off during the weekend. Monday, their inbox is already filled up with stuff, right? So like you're adding one more thing to their list of things to do. Friday, everybody wants to get out of the office. You're adding one more thing on their to-do list, right? Right. Right. Wednesday, or so Tuesday through Thursday is... I'm not saying it's not possible, you know what I mean? Like I'll do a follow-up on a Monday or a Friday, but if I'm doing like that code outreach, Mm -hmm. Tuesday through Thursday, between eight to 10, and four to six or like the sweet spots that kind of work oh no like i said in your situation there's a little more barriers you need to cross because of only being able to shoot on the weekends which could be a positive because a lot of the dentist stuff i've been working on recently we have been filming it on weekends because they need the like they need an office open to be able to shoot. Uh, So like normally some dentists do like half days here and there. And the other thing you might have to deal with is like um, them not wanting to pay their staff to come in on, uh, on the weekend. So those are like different hurdles and things you might have to deal with. But then a day it's, you're like, you got to talk to them about like, Hey, you're making an investment on your business, pay them the extra, you could either pay them the extra day, or you could pay, you know, a model, an actor to, to do it. So you're going to pay one or the other might as well use your people. Right. Um, do you have a business portfolio? I do not. Okay. So yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So I mean, with that itself, I think that's the first part of just starting that. I think like if you have a dentist that you use, I'll literally just reach out to them and be like, Hey, John, uh, you know, whatever, get my teeth clean from you. And you might know on the side, I do weddings, but I'm actually looking to branch out to doing business stuff would be open to me filming, you know, a two minute video for your practice, absolutely for free. I'm just trying to build down my portfolio. Um, So that's interesting. I reached out, man. And then, so this, this is what I couldn't understand. I literally went that route, not with my personal dentist, but literally. So I, I saw, I heard you say something. And if you had to do it over again, 
that you wouldn't just reach out to dentist offices, but you'll reach out. What was it like dentistry, like the board of dentistry, maybe? Yep. I had somebody that did that. Yep. So I went that route. Uh -huh. So I reached out. I Googled Wisconsin's uh, board of dentistry. And literally from the chairman to the co-chairman all the way down, I was like, hey, mm -hmm. my name is Juan Ye, you know, kind of giving the spill. Hey, I'm uh, pivoting over to filming commercials. I would like to do it for free. I just got, and even when I went to their website, there was no video on there. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't get any, any like traction with any yeah. of those. So after mm -hmm. like eight of those, then I was wondering like, okay, wait a minute, am I going the right direction? The thing with that is you don't have a track record, right? So for any of those people, you're, you're going, it's like you're going up to the top uh, and you have, right. so for anyone that's, that's busy, like with me, somebody that tells me like, Hey, I never shot anything in the past before. And I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to come and I want to, and I want to work for you. Can you, can you, I don't have time to do, I don't have time to babysit somebody. Right. So right. for them, even though it's an opportunity for it, and in your point of view, it's a great opportunity for you, your business owner, I want to make your free video for them. It's like, does this guy know what is he doing? What is this video going to look like? He doesn't have a proven track record. Am I going to be wasting my time? Those are all concerns that they're having as business owners. So that's like, for me, the first video I did when I moved back from New York, I went to my barber. I did my barber. I got, I got my first video in for my barber. I learned how to shoot interviews. I learned that like, I needed more time than what I thought. I thought like, you know, people couldn't hear in the background when it'd be a big issue. The noise was I like, I learned so many things from shooting that free business video. And then the next one, that's when I started reaching out to dentists. And I was like, Hey, listen, here's all these fashion stuff I've done in the past. I know what I'm doing. I just never shot business stuff before. Here's a video I, I recently did for another business owner. And I actually ranked that video online to help them um, uh, get traffic from Google because I know how to also upload these videos for Google, uh, for YouTube. So it helps their ranking. I'm looking to break in into the dentist market. Can I, I would love to shoot a free video for you. And I didn't have a dentist here back then. So what I did, I found, I went through, I went through Google, I typed in local dentist in my area and I found a dentist that was young, that was active on social media, had a, had a good amount of reviews. It was in a competitive market. So for him, I was like, I was like, listen, man, like I saw you have awesome reviews. I see that you guys are posting all the time. I see you're a young business owner. I'm trying to break into this market. I love to offer you a free video, no strings attached. I'm just looking to build my portfolio. Here's the link, my password. And then I followed up the first one. I think we emailed them twice. Didn't hear anything from him. And it wasn't until the last email that I was like, I was like, um, I forgot his name. Uh, but I was, was it Spence? I forgot his name. It was it uh, wasn't Austin? But I was like, I was like, hey man, I was like, I just want to make sure. Last, I was like, hey, last email. I promise. I wanna. I really want to work with you. So I want to send out this email one last time before I reach out to somebody else in your area. I just really wanted to offer this to you first. Are you not interested? And then he was like, yo. And so there is actually more to that, and the more of that was. I don't know if you guys, if you saw, I made them the review video. So I made the review videos and I was like, Hey, this video is ranked in the number, the number one page of, you know, YouTube. Like I wanted to start the conversation with them, give them something to talk about. And that's when I was like, Hey, if you don't want this, that's fine. I'm just going to go to somebody in your area. And that fear of like, do like, Hey, so, so what's up? Like, wait, so is this really free? Because like, I don't know if you have like, I mean, dude, I mean, I could show you like my email, like. And it's one of those things like when we're starting out our business, we don't understand what a business owner's email, like their like email looks like. But I mean, I'll, I'll show you this right now. Um, share screen. So like, you know, these are all different emails of like people that are like, hey, looking for WordPress developer, like letter from this, like new proof made to make, I, like we get these emails, can we partner with you, right? So like, these are all emails from people trying to sell me something. And this is just some my like, junk email, right? This is the ones that didn't make it. And there's the ones that do make it to my email, to my inbox. So this is where you're competing against. And I had no idea about this, right? Cause when we first start off with like setting up our like Google account and all of that, I don't know who you're e like, what email you're using for your Google and all of that, but like, this is what they have to deal with as a business owner. So like the key to this is persistency and to be like, right. yo, like, you know, it's emailing them two or three times. And like, I'm doing some more research on 
Let me pull up my notes. Cause I was actually doing research because I wanted to get better. Like I had like a slow beginning of the year and I was like, fuck this. Like, this is not going to happen. Like I'm not going to fall to my own bullshit of like not reaching out to clients, not preaching, you know, not doing what I preach. So I like, I literally spent the last week, like consuming sales, but it like add some crazy numbers about, uh, how frequently like the, the the amount of follow-ups that people need to do to actually get a sale or like the like if you follow up with a client within the first five minutes you have like a 50, a 60 percent chance of of closing them after that your number reduces every single time and then it was something to do with like the third and fourth and fifth you go up every time you following up every single time like up to the sixth time your chances of closing that deal goes up by 10%. The thing is, most people stop after the first one. Okay. That's good to know because I think I've sent out, um, I sent, I stopped at two because I just didn't know that process. So I, mm -hmm. I sent out a, like an initial one and it was really short and sweet. I, I think it was basically like, hey, got a quick question. That was kind of like in the subject. And then it'd be like, hi, and whoever the contact person I found through Hunter, I saw that you were using that. So uh -huh. I'll, I'll use that as an email tracker. And then I'll use that to like get the actual, a good email address for whatever that company is. And then I'll do a little research. I'll look at Google reviews and say, who are they thanking? You know, like, thank you, blah, 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 or whatever name this constantly comes up. And then I, I would just be like, hey, I noticed on your website, you didn't have any videos. Uh, wonder if, if that's intentional. Uh, I would like, this is something I would like to help you with. If you got time to, you know, to chat, you can reach me, you know, whatever. And it's kind of basically at that. And then I'll like send out, I didn't hear anything, but I can see, you know, it open like five or six or seven times through the email tracker. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go back and be like, okay, um, I reach out again and be like, Hey, maybe perhaps the first email ended up in your junk mail. Just want to see if you're still interested. In, can you, you know, pull up certain... your email that you, oh. like you pull up a copy oh, yeah, of it? Yeah. Yeah, so let's see here. I'm gonna share my screen. You don't have to share who your client is, but like if you just wanna like if you wanna copy and put it in a Google Doc oh, just to be able to read yeah, it. Yeah. Oh sweet, sweet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so this is a dentist that I reached out actually today. So I've still been trying to like just work it. Uh-huh. So I work in the medical field, and that's kind of why I'm targeting that because I know that lingo. You know, I used to be a technician, I understand the talk, I understand all of that. So that's kind of where I was feel probably most comfortable. I, mean, I guess I'm wondering even that which I um, sent is that too much? Because I hear that people don't, you know, they don't have time to- Yeah, they don't, emails. they really don't. Okay, I found it. So, so set up clear expectations or next meeting. Uh, one call only has 30 to 40%, 30 to 40% chance of closing. You get at least six phone calls, 90% chance of closing. Having a why for your follow-up is important. 49% uh, of people prefer a phone call. Don't ask close-ended questions. Call them every five days. Once you get to the 20th day, send them an email. After 28 days, call them every 30 days. So that's interesting. Is that the conclusion or the thought is that it's more recommendable to call versus an email? So normally what I'll do is I would send an email introducing myself and then you'd call to follow up and be like, Hey, this is Rodrigo. Like, Hey, can you pass me over to Dr. John? And they're like, what is this regarding? It's about the email I sent him last week about his video versus be like, I used to be like, Hey, uh, hi, this is Rodrigo Tasca from Tasca studios. Is, is Dr. John available? You see the difference in just how me, how I'm asking to talk to a doctor versus the first one. The other one, I'm like asking for the permission to see if he's available. The other one, it's like, hey, they're expecting my phone call. Patch me through. Gotcha. But then it's just like, I'm like, hey, John, it's Rodrigo. Uh, it seems you got a chance to look at my email. Uh, what email is this? Oh, about the video. You know what I mean? You start a conversation from there. And this is where, like you said, you have the tracking software. So you know that they open the email five or six times. So I'll call, I'll be like, I'll be like, hey, John. Uh, you know, to me, you just want to follow up. I saw that you open the email. You don't know if I know any questions I could answer from you. Is there a reason, you know, you have not decided to move forward with this project or like, what's the situation? Okay. Cause I felt like you should, what I hear is that you should give them a reason why, like, 
why so i kind of was like well this is what i see as a problem and i can fix that should that not really be the method because that's basically how i was going at it no because you're you're projecting that there's something wrong with their business ah okay all right. You know, imagine you're like, wait, who the hell is this dude telling me I'm not doing something right? What does he know? You're coming asking me for my business. And then so in yours, you're like, hey, Sally had a quick question. Your dental clinic website, da 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 yeah, did have a video about your work, needed a level of service, your Google view or no expectations after procedure. Is this intentional? Like right here to me, this is very negative in the sense of like, you're like, you're telling me that I'm not doing something right. You know what I mean? This is not the best way, like for me to really start a conversation with somebody. If I could help, if I could help by filming one video for you for free, the selection is based on your clinic. Would you be interested if so? Yeah. So then you're like asking, you know, way too many questions. You go from like projecting negativity and maybe the negativity button where people want to see it or say it, but it's just like, you're saying you're not doing this. Is there a reason why you're not doing these things that I know you should be doing? And then you're like, I could help do this with a free video versus so subject, quick video thought came across your reviews. Your patients have some great things to say. Insert one of the comments here. Tasha series helps dentists showcase their practice with dental videos using YouTube and Facebook. We have some great results for one of our clients, Ruben Dentistry and Palms Dental Care and others in the area. These videos have been cost and time efficient for our clients, allowing them to make a great impression on patients searching the web. To find out more about your marketing goals, let me know if you have some time to chat this week. And then do I have this? Oh, call and leave a voicemail. That's the task too. That's like what I would follow up on that. If they didn't answer this, I'll call, I'll call them, leave a voicemail. And then like, hey, hope all is well. I want to bump this up my previous email. Thought you're finding time to connect. How's your calendar looking? Just, you know, and then I had a testimonial that the client gave us. So like, just want to, like I said, you're, when you're initially starting now, all you have to do is to prove to one business owner that you know what you're doing. Cause most right. of them don't want to give you the chance. Uh, you know, they don't have the time. You know what I mean? Like if you're a busy person, like you just don't have the time to just be spending a couple, a couple hours with somebody. Same thing, like, you know, I was like, hey, at this point, I'm going to assume increasing your line a little bit. So here I get a little bit, I guess, like negative in a sense. I'm just like, hey, so you don't want to grow, like, you know, this year, feel free to reach out. I might change this just to make it sound a little bit better. But this is where, um, you know, this is kind of the sequence that we were using for a bit. But eventually, you know, and it's something I talked about in the channel was like, I got so busy that like, I didn't have to go on sales. I, like, I didn't go on sales calls for two years. And literally this past month, I finally went on sales calls again and I'm about to stop because I need help. <laughs> <laughs> but I built the portfolio, right? And it's within the portfolio. And that's it's how like, if you can't get a person to commit to your free video, how are you going to get somebody to pay for one? And there's exceptions, right? Like you said, you can find those people on Facebook. You can find those people on thumbtack they want to pay you 300 bucks and they want you to work for eight hours and you know do a 30 minute presentation it just doesn't make sense being said so portfolio uh -huh. where do you think website like should i should that be the focus for web portfolio then website before really um reaching out or will portfolio probably be enough to at least get one client so portfolio sounds like priority number one i would say you, you need at least one video Okay. You know what then I mean? Like website from there. Then a website. I mean, at this point, if you're just, like you said, if you're just starting now, you don't have a website, like just send them to your YouTube page or send them to your Vimeo. Like you spending time or money in a website. It's one of those things of like, it really doesn't change. Like it might change some things, but it's not to the, to the point of, you know, it's going to be a definite no to some people because at some point like, I've closed deals with people that I even looked at my website that came from just reference of knowing like, you know, my work. So for you, like you, you do have a portfolio, but it just happens to be in weddings. So you just need to let them know that I'd be like, Hey, here, like my website's not up yet. And like, and this is the same thing. Like I, if they're not asking, for these things, I'm not letting them know these things. They don't need to know that you don't have a website. All you need to do is shoot that one video 
link that video in the email to be like, hey, here's a video I did gotcha. for so and so. That's a good point. If I can't sell a free one, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's a good point. And then here are like other things that I do too is like, um, when I get emails from other, another thing to like start looking at, and this is kind of like, I don't know if it's a good strategy. Some people not like it, but it's something I'm really big on not reinventing the wheel. I just want to make my life move faster. So I'll look at other companies that are established. I'll sign up for shit with no intention. I went into user business, but I want to figure out what is, what is your sales funnel looks like. Right. So I'll go back right, to my, right. my email here. I started getting these emails from at and And in a sense, they're a little bit long, but like, Hey, my name is John. I'm a blah, 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 blah. National team. My job is to look for ways to improve our business with reliable current technology, fast internet, like less time and time to schedule. So, you know, it's not very different than what I wrote. Right. Right. And then like, um, same thing. Like I was getting these emails from Wix. Wix was like, uh, I noticed your app solutions that you're offering your site. I think you could really benefit from joining our partner program. And then like their drip email, like what's, what was her next email after that? So I started saving these. I have like a thing called the email templates. Every time I get an email from a client that I like that I'm like, oh, this is interesting. I'm stealing their shit. Hey, hey my name is Barry. I'm reaching out because my team thought that Tasco would be a great match for us here at VR Business Brokers. We specialize in representing business and seller or buyers and sellers in business sales transactions. I'd love to get some additional information on the prospect or selling task to a buyer in our network. Do you have a few minutes and some time to jump? Like you see how condensed this email is that I was like, right, right. I got this email. I sent it to my sister. I was like, yo, copy this shit. Let's, uh, let's, <laughs> let's make a version of it. So, you know, every time I get something like this, like somebody else, like quick frames, another big company that does video. Let's start a quick, just the way, like, you know, let's, let's start a conversation about video marketing strategy. You know what I mean? So it's just like, I'm like, I like how that sounds. Right. Cause like quick frame is a huge company that has right. tons of people that work for them. Somebody spent a lot of money writing this copy coming that up for them. So for me, you know, let's talk about, cause here's the other thing too. I think another big thing that we get stuck at is talking about like video production. We need to be using the words video marketing, video marketing strategy. Cause like at the end of the day, every business owner you work with, all they care about is the results. Is their phone going to ring? Is the video that you're going to produce to them going to help them get more clients? Cause like I've seen really shitty videos that do really well for business owners. Like once that you're just like coaching them, like, yo, so say this through the phone, looking at the camera, and let's like do this, make it very personal, no high production works really well. You know what I mean? So it's not so, and sometimes it's not so much about the production, but it's about the strategy. How is this going to help them? Right. So like, you know, other videos right now, we're working with dentists. Uh, we work with the uh, specialist in uh, Orlando that they do root canals. All they do is root canals. So making a video for them about what makes them different than a regular dentist? Like, like I'm like, what, are, what do you guys get bogged with all the time? And they're like, we get these questions that people wanted to know, like, why is it different? Why do I need a root canal? Like how much time do you spend telling them these things, man, we have like a whole sales team. They're telling these people this all the time. So what about if you create a video, that your sales team's able to share with prospects wondering about this. And here's the top three things people ask before getting a root canal. And every time somebody books an appointment, you can send them that page on your website that explains all these different things. How much time would that free up to your staff where you could actually be making other calls? Man, right. that'll free up our staff a, a lot of time. So when are you going to start shooting those videos? You know what I mean? So like just having a different conversation. Because if I'm like, be like, hey, do you want to shoot a, a cool video like for your website? Just make it, you know, look awesome or whatever. They'll be like, yeah, I don't really need it. I'm really doing, I'm doing other marketing. Like, why is this important to me? I really feel like if I could get into that position, I don't, I don't, I think that might, that's like a strong point. Like just being mm -hmm. able to have that conversation, but it's like getting to the table. It's kind of, for me, I see as a barrier. Go reach out to your, like, if I was you right now, I'd go to, I mean, not right now and finish the call. Go on Facebook and be like, hey, guys, do you personally know someone that owns a dentist practice? I would love right. to connect with them. Gotcha. That's what I would You know do. what I mean? And so now you're coming through with the connection from somebody. And guess what? That person that you're going to do, the, like, 
the first dude I shot the business, the dental video for, I got three clients from him that all paid me for work. Like hey, where, where he went to college, uh-huh. he had roommates. All three of his roommates have practices here in South Florida. So like, it was like the first guy is like, Hey, he did a video for him. My video needs to be better than his. How much did you charge him? I was like 1800 bucks. He's like done. Next guy was $3,500. Next guy was 4,500 bucks. And the sales process got easier and easier and easier because you keep getting better, but then you, so does your work, right? So, so, so do your rates. And then you start realizing like, Hey, this will works and that doesn't work. Uh, and you just start having a different conversation with them. Got it. But that's so always, that, start, with, start with your network, man. Start with your network. Then that other question, which might be just like jumping the gun here. Like, I guess I got, so I gonna say like, I felt like, okay, then I clearly now I just didn't understand the process of onboarding a client. Mm-hmm. So then I targeted dentists just simply because it seemed the easiest way. Like the, the road is paved for me. I'd rather just walk down this road knowing I'm already in the medical field and I know like, you know, that world. But then I was like, man, I'm not getting any traction here. So I jumped over to like a roofer. <laughs> I was like, and I was just like, man, ain't nothing shaking here. Let me go talk to these guys, see if they're interested. What do you, should I not do that? Should I specialize? Should I just grab, you know? As, as, as someone that I literally just had a call with Chris though about this. I don't know if you follow him and my buddy Mo, but Chris is yelling at, not yelling at us, I'll say that very loosely, but Chris was telling us, he's like, the reason you guys have not gotten as far as I know you can get is because every time you guys hit a little speed bump or something happens, you guys jump ship. And we had this whole conversation because like I was talking about, I was like, I want to launch a course. I'll make $100,000 a year doing this, this, and that. So it's like, listen, he's selling to this to me. He's like, I'm a pretty smart guy, right? He's like, I don't know, like not to insult anybody, but like, I'd say like, I've done better than you and he's like, it took me, I remember he said two or three years for me to do $250,000. And that's what the team of people at 14 employees have a studio. Right now you're struggling to stay on track. You think that you're going to be able to do a hundred thousand dollars. And he was telling us, he's like, what happens is with entrepreneurs is that we go through these cycles of like, we are, we start doing something that works. And then eventually it starts working for us and we stop and we start doing something differently because that thing that we started doing, it's not as exciting enough for us. But the thing is, is that we need to keep going on the same track because that's what really separates most people where most people quit and they jump different things is because they are, are just losing, uh, you know, sight of where they want to go. And there's somebody else, if you don't follow him, his name is Alex, uh, Hormozy. No, I don't know. Who he is. Uh, dude is like a G man, like, uh, runs a, he started off like doing gyms and personal training, but he was talking about it. Same thing. Same thing. He's like, most people quit when they got to keep going. And he like talks about that meme. Like we all see that meme of the guy digging through with a shovel and there's like two, one oh, on top of the yeah, other. Yeah. And then the guy is that close to getting the diamonds. And he's like, that's where it's at. And he's like telling me, not telling me, but on this video, Alex is talking about, he's like, you know, the guy that lives above me, he made like cleared billions and he's like he's been doing the same thing for 40 years he's like most people can't stomach that to the exact same thing but he's like he lives in a penthouse above me he's making more money than me and i asked him like what like why did you how did you do this he's like i just kept going and everybody else stopped so like staying in that track and the thing is okay. the more specialized that you can get within an industry it's really hard for people to compete against you because then you're like I only shoot like the reason I stopped doing, I took weddings off our website was because I had business owners. They were like, I don't like the fact that you shoot weddings. I went to my day only does business videos. So I like I started right. Tasca weddings. And then before, like before I started Tasca weddings, the same thing. Brides are like, Oh, I don't like that. You shoot business videos. I'm looking for somebody that's really passionate about wedding films. So I was like, Oh, that's the issue. Let me start this other website. But the thing is then like one day, like task weddings, we close like, you know, three deals in one month. I'm like, oh, we're going to do all this stuff with task weddings. Let's put, you know, this other business on the side. And then we start doing task weddings. And then like, it might slow down here. They're like, oh man, nothing's happening here. Let me jump back to this one. And, and maybe this yeah. will get better. Right. So um, Alex talks about this in one of the videos. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link this. I'm going to find the video and I'll link it down here. But he talks about, um, 
you know, it was like for one year, solve one problem for one person. You know what I mean? Focus wow. on doing okay. that. And then eventually within that year, when the year's over, then start adding additional services to those customers based on what you already know. So for you, it's just like, hey, get really good at shooting two minute business profile videos for dentists. And that's all that we do. Got it. Just work on, on doing that, right? I, I think, like that, yeah. You okay. know, and with you, like I said, the fact that you, right now you can't work during the week and it's only weekends, it might work out for you uh, better than other jobs. Cause like right now, you know, we got a bunch of stuff that happens throughout the week. You know, almost never shoot on weekends other than like for this dentist, but he's like, you know, every other month type of client right now for us. Um, but with the dentist, it normally happens to be like on the weekends or one of those like half days that, you know, they close the shop up early and we get to go in there. So, um, when you, talk, you, you were mentioning pricing mm -hmm. and you were talking about like you, you charge this one and the next guy, you charge that one. H how are you, what formula are you using to come up with that? What do you mean? You said your first person, you, 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 um, you charge like $1,600 or something like that for the dentist. And then the next one you charge like, like double that. And the next one, it was like more than that. Like what formula are you using? Uh, the formula that I wanted, it's, it's, it's whatever you want. You know what I mean? So for me, eventually, I think the first thing that everybody needs to figure out is how much money do I need to make? Right. So like for me, initially it was, okay, I'm still living in my mom's house. This is the least amount that I could afford to, you know, keep my cost of living and do all that stuff. And eventually I was like, okay, now my day rate is, you know, I think it was like $1,200. And then I'm going to charge him, you know, uh, 600 bucks to edit the video. Right. So, right. so now for us, our half day rate is 1500 bucks, full day rates, 3000. And then our math, depending on like what the client needs, but normally for like talking head stuff, it's about four hours for every one minute of video. Like for, it's going to be like one minute of talking head. We're talking about at least four out minimum four hours to edit that. So if it's a two or three minute video, you know, so I think right now a two minute video for us averages around like $4,000, but in the beginning okay. it was different. Right. So just like me trying to figure out like, okay. And that's where like, I recently started recording. I started doing like, uh, uh, screen captures of like how I edit and how long it takes. And I talk to the camera talking about like, Hey, this is what I'm doing these different things. So now as I'm trying to grow my team, I want to have a catalog of like, Hey, if you're ever editing these videos, this is what I'm looking for. This is how you should start editing them, that kind of stuff. But you need to start figuring out how long is it going to take you to edit this video? Because then you can start creating a productized service. So now, you know, like, Hey, for us to come in, shoot a two minute video for you. It's going to be a, it's going to be an eight hour day. It's going to be a full day of filming. It's not as intense as it sounds. We'll do some interviews in the morning and then we'll break for lunch. And then we'll catch instant B-roll in the afternoon. The editing process usually takes about two weeks, um, you know, back and forth with revisions and, you know, you get two revisions and then you got to figure out how long does that take you to, to go through that. And it's, you know, it's, like I said, you have those, four hours for every one minute of playable videos, but then you got to start thinking about the you're coming home, you're backing up the footage, you're creating proxies, you're, you know, going through the footage and then you're, you're, you know, editing the footage. So right now we're already putting like, I was doing that by hour. So you already got five hours before I even start editing the video. You know what right. I mean? So I'm right. counting for those five hours before I, I didn't do that. And it wasn't until I started hiring another, another production company to do uh, some of the projects for me. And I started realizing how much I started buying my time back. And uh, there's another kid I started coaching in uh, in Canada that he went a totally different approach. He like, he was going after gyms for a second. And then he realized, he was like, I'm gonna sell all my camera. I'm just gonna sell the video production service. And I'm gonna hire a production company to come in and I'm just going to go there and direct and make sure that everything's looking good. And he like, doesn't even shoot videos anymore. So now he's just focused. He really just 
runs a video production business and he doesn't worry about the editing and stuff like that. So he already went like one step above and, and skipped all of that. But you need to figure out, you need to turn that into a product that you know, because every if you go in and you shoot a two minute video every single time, that starts, it's like a wedding. You know, you know what you got to do when you get to a wedding. Yep, you yep, know the yep, shots. Yep. You got to do the exact same thing for the for a dentist video. Got it. Okay. And then you don't, do you do retainer base? client or are you do you go that route it depends on the client because a lot of clients nowadays their uh their needs shift right now we only have one retainer client i guess we have two but officially we only have one client that we work with every single week but i have other clients that you know most of our clients right now we've been working with them for about two to three years i don't say that they're not all necessarily retainer clients but you know we'll do stuff with them every single month there's really nothing official but like I have a um, agreement that they just sign at the beginning of the year that they know like, Hey, if you call us to come out, it's going to be 300 bucks an hour. There's how long, there's how much we're going to charge you for editing. So they know what it's so like, not every time they need something. And I'm like, Hey, can we send this agreement? Can you send an invoice? We have like a, a master right. agreement that says, Hey, when you need us, we're going to come out ASAP. This is what you're going to get built. Up. Got you. And then the last, you're not offering to run ads for those for any clients, are you? Not anymore. All right. So if you can find you... somebody to run ads for, it only makes the selling process slightly easier for you because like I had a really hard time in the beginning, um, like two years ago when I started doing TV commercials, I couldn't understand why people were doing TV commercials because to me, I want to say they're a, a waste of, uh, money but it, they're not as effective as other ways of um uh, other medias right like social media facebook ads youtube all of that but the way when i started learning about how they sell uh the tv spots that's where I was, that's where business owners buy in they buy into the fact of somebody's getting that video and they're doing something for them so for me that's where i focus on doing the youtube seo so for me it's like hey we're not only producing this video for you right. we're also going to help market for you are we actually going to get this video ranked for the keywords that you're actually trying to rank for for your website to help boost your your presence so it's it's a marketing piece and collateral for what they're doing because before i was like hey here's your video and they're like okay great thank you like two weeks go by i'm like hey you didn't post a video on your website and it's not on youtube they're like yeah we shared it on facebook and then like we shared a link here and like it just didn't work out and i was like oh shit this is where the problem is like they didn't know what to do with the video i just and then they tell me the video doesn't work so if you're able to work with an agency that does distribution then that's a plus um but the only problem with that you know with us working with agencies a lot of those shoots happen throughout the week because in those agencies they don't want to have their team working on weekends. Did you ever have that process of um, transitioning from full time to uh, just full? Or were you always like freelance and always in between? The only time I had really transitioned, I mean, I guess there's two transitions. And the first one was when I was living in New York and I went from, you know, freelance to like full time videographer. Like when I like literally quit my job at a restaurant and serving tables and I went full time. And then my other transition was when I moved to South Florida from New York and I thought I was going to come back down here and just like, just kill it. And no one knew who I was. And I, what I didn't understand was that in New York, there was a market and demand for video that pe people in New York, like you all say Florida's like, you know, uh, slow to the game, what's happening. But when I was in New York, like I was working with you no know, PR agencies, I was working with magazines, which they were constantly wanting video because they're, they already had a purpose for it. Right. So I didn't understand the marketing aspect of video. So the big shift for me was when I moved down here and I, I was producing videos and people were telling me the videos didn't work. So then that's when I had to learn about like marketing and, and YouTube SEO and like learn more about right. Facebook ads because people didn't know what to do with video. So I went through like that kind of transition. They're like, that's when I ended up moving back to my mom's house. Cause like I wasn't making any money. So within like those two years of me, just like eating shit, as I call it, I went through a process of like, you know, I was taking on videos for 200 bucks, $300. I was just trying to build my portfolio and like make some money and kind of like get a hang of it. Cause before then, like 
I wasn't working with businesses like the way I was working here in South Florida. Cause in New York, it was like my agency rep would call like, Hey, we need you to come out to this event and, you know, shoot us a video and they'll send me a check. Where like here, it was like, I got burned a couple of times and like, I didn't understand the contract stuff. Um, you know, I wasn't taking deposits. I'd be like, Oh, just pay me when it's done. All these things that I probably would have learned if I had to work for an agency, I had to learn the hard way myself. So like that was like a transition period that I had to go through. Got you, man. I think that's, that's pretty much the things that um I jotted down just, just the onboarding process, which just seems like I just didn't have a clear expectation of what an email should look like. And then the expectation mm -hmm. that, you know, you shouldn't need follow-up emails and then a real process. Like I said, I was just all over the place and I just quit. It was like, forget it. I'm, I'm going to talk to the dude over here. Like, <laughs> and then dude went answers. And I was like, wait a minute, let me just pause for a minute. Cause then I was thinking like, oh, well maybe it's, a, I don't have a website. You know, I, I couldn't really figure out what the problem was, but I, I'm a little bit more clear on that now. Yeah, I, think I think I'm good, man. I, I'm, I'm excited about, about this. And I don't know, I, th I feel like, I don't know, my, my main plan was to, so I, through you, I started following Chris though. And I started just like, like trying to absorb much content as possible and just not just trying to absorb it. Cause I think he just had something called dream client. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I like, well, it was, it was already over with, but I just kind of like looking at that and just trying to like work that process. But I think this is what I needed to truly understand that. So I think um, I'm good to go. I think I got what I need. Awesome, bro. Uh, let me know how it goes. Uh, I love to just kind of see. But like I said, I think the biggest thing for you is go shoot that one video. Go shoot that one dentist video and like put money behind it if you have to. Like hire somebody to come out and help you like produce. And that's something that I used to tell people all the time starting out. Like the younger guys would be like, oh, they're paying me 500 bucks. I'm going to give them a $500 video. It's like, no, like when people pay me 500 bucks, I was producing a thousand dollar videos. And then I'm like, if you pay me a thousand dollars, I was going to produce you a $2,000 video because like the next, the reason I was able to charge that client the $1,800 after they did the free video was the free video that I shot was an $1,800 video. So they asked me how much was that video. I said a video like that runs for around $1,800 versus me producing a free video. Like what's the point? If you're going to produce a free video and you're going to make a shitty video, then like, why are you doing it? Like if I'm making, like when I still do free videos, I'm producing videos that I'm going to be able to leverage to get paid work. Like every opportunity that I take on that's free is for me to leverage that to actually make more money. Got it. All right, man. I, I'm, I'm, I got more than enough. I'm really confident that at least I feel like I'm on the right. I just know what to do when that obstacle comes. At least it doesn't mm -hmm. deter me. It made me feel like I'm on the wrong path. <laughs> yeah. 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 It usually takes longer than we think. Right. Right. Well, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate it, man. I'm going to respect your time, man. And uh, I really do appreciate this, man. I really right, bro. do. Keep me posted. Will do, man. Take it All easy. All right, good. Peace.